the Business Forum. It brought together innovators, fund managers, business people, and of course, potential investors. And all these were eager to know the investment opportunities available in Rwanda and to make deals. Welcome to this special edition of Doing Business in Rwanda, where we focus on the Business Forum that happened in Washington, D.C. on the eve of Rwanda Day 2024. The Business Forum kicked off with an eloquent presentation of Rwanda's post-pandemic recovery and growth journey. The year 2020 and the year 2021 are probably the only years in the recent history of Rwanda that we saw negative growth, or let me say, a decline in our economic growth for the first time. But when the pandemic was defeated, our government had some strategic interventions, including a recovery program to support and give a new stimulus package to struggling companies that had suffered immense damage during COVID, particularly those in the services sector like the hospitality sector, travel and tourism, transport, and education, and others. When COVID ended, it meant that the economy was able to begin. And in 2022, I'm happy to report that immediately after the defeat of the pandemic, we had an economic growth of over 8.2%. This was followed by an equally robust growth in 2023 of over 9.2%. <laughs> and by all projections, we are up to a good start in 2024 to resume the trend that was interrupted in 2020 so that we can continue the same trajectory of our positive, sustained growth of the Rwandan economy. The country's economic recovery was driven by several strategic investments in key sectors, as well as leveraging on new opportunities. Our country has, over the last few decades, been investing in infrastructure, looking far to develop new sectors of economic foundations, particularly those in the hospitality sector, that gave an opportunity for our economy to rebound immediately and quickly. It's not surprising that the tourism sector was the first to grow and get business back, even though it is the one that had suffered the most. Thanks to the investments in the Kigali International Convention Center, thanks to the investments in the various hospitality facilities by private investors, thanks to the investments in the new sports platforms, particularly the now famous BK Arena, and others that have provided platforms for diversifying from the previously well-known and liked leisure and wildlife tourism to conferences, to meetings, and sports tourism. This has meant that today, as we speak, the tourism sector is performing 15% better than it was in 2019 prior to the COVID pandemic. The agricultural sector has rebounded most recently with productivity, but also diversifying the different products available, both for the domestic market as well as for international export, where our tea and coffee were always well known and liked on international markets. Today, thanks to investments in international uh, cargo aviation, Rwandan fresh fruits, 
and vegetables, flowers, and others are reaching international markets on just-in-time delivery basis. With the government having created a conducive investment environment, the agriculture sector is one that holds immense promise for growth. They should come and invest in modern agriculture. Most of the diaspora, they invest in real estates and other businesses, but they forget very important business, which is agriculture. Now Rwanda has opportunity in agriculture. There is market, there is incentives to the inputs. So I call upon diaspora to come and invest in agriculture in Rwanda. A lot of farmers are investing in food production. And also there is an upcoming project of Gabiro Agribusiness Hub in eastern part of Rwanda, where the uh, investors are coming to plant more fruits and vegetables. So I'm very sure that uh, uh, Ministry of Agriculture has put incentives like uh, irrigation, installation, like fertilizer incentives. So there's going to be huge, huge, huge uh, fruits and vegetables production in Rwanda. Rwandans in the diaspora are making contributions to the country's growth in various ways. PhD student at Purdue University, Imable Mugawo, is working with the Scientific Animations Without Borders organization that transforms extension information on relevant topics such as agriculture into 2D and 3D animations, which are then voiced into a diversity of languages from around the world. I was working with Purdue University as a staff. I initiated a collaboration between uh, Purdue University with the government of Luanda through lab, Luanda Agriculture and Animal Resources. So SWABO is a program, it's Purdue University based program where we develop and make the videos, then they distribute for free so that people with uh, low literacy can access, can understand those videos via uh, ICTs, information communication technologies like mobile phone, smartphone. Uh, they can use, uh, they can watch those animated videos on TV, YouTube. So I initiated that collaboration to the point as a result so far they have been translating more than 34 videos into Kenya Rwanda. Second, we developed a co-branded website. Now we are also going to into second phase where they are going to invest more money so that they can develop new videos in Kenya Rwanda in the context of Rwanda. Being a beneficiary of a presidential scholarship that saw him study science and engineering in the U.S., Method Imani Raguha started an engineering company in the U.S. and is now investing back home in Rwanda as well as in India. For Method, investing in Rwanda was his way of giving back to the country that had heavily invested in him. I'm from Rwanda. When I started the company and was doing well here in the U.S., I was thinking of ways, A, that can give back. I was given a lot. You know, I was given a lot. I was uh, the first in my family line to ever go to college. And the government of Rwanda, through the vision of our uh, president, His Excellency Paul Kagame, uh, created an opportunity for a kid like me to get an education in California, U.S. And I've uh, taken that opportunity and run with it. You know, God blessed me. Um, other people helped along the way. I'm thinking, how can I give back? So A, you know, um, we, we are in Rwanda because we want to give back. We want to give employment opportunities to college graduation, graduate kids. Um, that is one, one aspect. The other aspect, this is not a charity, by the way. It's a business. So this is a for-profit operation. Um, so why go to Rwanda? not uh, Zambia or Nigeria or Kenya, you know, or any other country. You know, they, for the business to work, uh, you, have, you need an enabling environment. And Rwanda has created that. So nobody in RDB or in anybody recruited me to bring my business there, but I saw what they did. And I'm a businessman. I'm running a business that is profitable, that is impacting people's lives. So we, we saw 
the environment was there, the talent was there, so we connected talent with opportunities that we had. So now we see those seeds growing and hopefully we can grow them even further to provide actual energy on the African continent. Method invested more than $1 million to start his company in Rwanda and contribute to the country's renewable energy journey. So we invested over 1.1 million US dollars in less than 12 months. That difference there, we acquired the land and we want to use that land to build demonstration projects for solar, batteries, resources, infrastructure to demonstrate to the Rwandan ecosystem, businesses, government officials, and the regulators that solar energy, when it done properly, could be the solution not only for Rwanda, but also for the African continent. And we think because that enabling environment I talked about, we think uh, this is a successful demonstration that by the way we want to complete by the end of this year. For us we move fast, we get things done. We are biased and one of our core values is we get things done, which means we have a bias for action anchored in our vision. So we move fast. As long as when we know what to do, we move very fast. So by the end of this year, one of those demonstration projects operational, uh, and then uh, with that enabling environment, we hope uh, those successful projects will be, uh, uh, will demonstrate the potential for solar, batteries, storage technologies coupled with ICT, smart meters, software engineering, monitoring capabilities, to make sure we can monitor those resources anywhere on earth. And uh, we, we wanted to scale them to, to supply, uh, to add to the capacity of uh, Rwanda uh, energy resources with that on grid or off grid. Of, of course, those are the future uh, aspirations, but we hope those successful projects, we can use them as a launch pad and we, we, we've seen how Rwanda enables that to happen. For us to move those projects into other neighboring countries and the countries on the African continent as a whole. Apart from energy and agriculture, Rwanda is working to attract the Rwandan diaspora to invest in the country through the capital markets. We have more people actually uh, through Mushichirano who are coming to Rwanda or even online who are doing a lot of inquiries. Some of them have started opening accounts in different, uh, and, and buying different products. Uh, the most recent actually example I could give is some people who have participated in the Rwanda's uh, BRD, uh, the Development Bank of Rwanda um, Sustainability Link Bond, for example. So we had uh, actually a lot of people who invested in it from the diaspora, retail investors that we are talking about. So the drive is still going on. Yeah, we are working with the Capital Market Authority, uh, Central Bank and other stakeholders uh, in our investment community to, to galvanize our, our diaspora members to also invest directly into, the, into Rwanda, into the economy, but through the capital markets and other products we offer on the market and financial services. Thank you so much for watching this special edition of Doing Business in Rwanda, where we brought you important discussions that happened during the business forum uh, that took place on the eve of Rwanda Day 2024 in Washington, D.C. Do connect with us on Twitter or on X. Our platform is at CNBC Africa or tag me directly at Tessie Cabin. Bye for now.